I've been working here for five years, which has been a fantastic part of my artistic life. And at the end of this five years, I thought I wanted to give something back to the festival because it's given me so much in terms of a wonderful body of work I've been able to make. So I asked Bernard Foucault if I could run the Opera Creation Workshop. And I was really, really lucky because he said that I could. And it's one of the things I really love doing, which is working with young people on how to make things. The two workshops that we've done with young women, conductors, composers, librettists and directors, have been fantastic in terms of looking at gender equality in opera. And there have been two wonderful outcomes. The first was the women themselves felt more strengthened by the work to head out into the world and become stronger artists. And the second was the senior management allowed these young female artists to present a sequence of projects to them. And I think that meant that the senior management here became more engaged with the body of work that those young women are making, which is a really thrilling offer. And then there was something very surprising that came out of the workshop. And that was we were visited by a young woman called Lucy Kerbel from the United Kingdom who runs an organisation that helps all the leading performing arts organisations in the United Kingdom improve their gender equality. So she came as part of our workshop and then very kindly um, she met with the senior management here and that initiated, I think, a programme over a long period of time where the issues of gender equality, both in the administration and also in the creative team and the repertoire, are going to be deeply and thoughtfully looked at. I have so many fantastic memories from my time here and the five shows that I've made. And when I look back, each show has a very distinct moment that I recall very fondly. Obviously, Written on Skin was such an amazing piece of work. And I remember the opening night and the surprise when George and Martin went for their bow of the whole house rising up and standing there calling bravo. And I realized that by wonderful miracle, I had found myself as part of this birth of one of the most exceptional operas written this century. So that was my first memory of Written on Skin. And then when I think of the house taken over, for me, it was the way that the temperature changes at night. You're sort of very hot during the day, you're in the 30s, and then at night, by about 1 a.m. when you're doing your lighting sessions, when you're outside at the Grand Saint-Jean venue, the temperature dips, and I have to wear sort of a woolly hat, a thick jumper, a winter coat, thick socks to do my lighting, and then I'm shivering, and I look up at the wonderful moon and the stars above. So that was a, a fantastic memory for that. And then we move on to Trauernacht. And I think for me, it was my addiction to Citron Presse that I remember most of all, and drinking this very, very sort of unsweetened, freshly squeezed lemon juice, whilst watching Raphael Pichon, the conductor, work in such amazing psychological detail with such a true and authentic love of the meeting between theater and the work that I was doing with the performers and music. So that was me, the Lemons and Raphael. And then we go to Alcina. And that has to be about the brilliance of Patricia Pettibon's work. When I said to her that for the first aria, she had to be making love to someone as she sung it, there was this sort of childlike giggle and this wonderful red hair shook a little bit. And then she started to work and she offered up such beautiful, tender work. It was totally breathtaking. And I thought secretly to myself, this was the first day, I thought everything will be fine because I'm working with such a brilliant interpretive artist. And then Pelias, that for me was so frightening because it's like the big French icon. And to be a British woman doing that in France was very, very intimidating to begin with. But I suppose the thing that I remember most from that is the way that um, Bernard Foucault and his wife Annick and Alain Peru came into the rehearsals very early on and watched me make it and contributed and helped make something. And I think it's one of those amazing things at a festival like this. If you work over time with teams, it means that finally you start to make things together. And that sounds really strange because most people understand directing as something that you do with just the singers. But I think in this festival, everyone becomes involved in making the shows that I make here and everyone contributes at a really deep level to the outcomes, makes the impossible possible. Next year, I'm doing Ariadne Alphnaxos 
at the Archevêché, and this is a huge new challenge for me. Again, like the Grand Saint-Jean, I'm outside, but I'm outside in a very, very particular new space. And watching this year Simon McBurney cope with the rain during his early rehearsals, I realised that I'm in a slightly chaotic place. And being a control freak like I am, like most directors are, I don't know how I'm going to feel when I'm being made to feel powerless by nature. But I'm really looking forward to it. Maybe not so much the long nights doing my lighting till 4am in the morning, but I really like the idea of the possible chaos of nature's relationship to the work we'll be making. In my dreams, when I think about doing a project here that I've never done, I think of projects like Britain's Requiem, or um, the St. Matthew Passion, or orchestral pieces like Shostakovich's Symphony No. 14, or Mahler's Second. So doing pieces of music that have never been staged and doing them in this incredible location with all the wonderful team that are here. That I would love to do.